Are you ready to take the Praxis Core Math exam? Well, stick with me and by the end of this video, I'll make sure that you're equipped with all the information, testing strategies, and the confidence that you need in order to pass this test. Welcome to the Praxis Test Prep channel. My name is Akin. I'm a certified teacher and test prep expert with study.com. We're proud to partner with ETS, which is the official provider of the Praxis exams. And this is to bring you the most accurate and up-to-date information straight from the source. By the end of this video, you have everything that you need to effectively prepare for this exam and take the next step in your teacher career. If you're ready, then let's jump in. Let's start with the basics. If you're an aspiring teacher, then chances are that you need to pass the Praxis Core Math exam before working full-time. Many colleges and universities require the Praxis Core test suites as part of the admission process into their teacher preparation programs. And if you don't take it, then many states will require it before granting you your teaching license. So what can you expect from Praxis Core Math specifically? This exam is designed to assess your math knowledge as well as your ability to teach mathematics effectively. The exam focuses on foundational concepts that teachers need to cover in their classrooms and is broken into the following key topic areas number and quantity, and data interpretation and representation, statistics and probability, algebra and geometry. We'll dive into more detail for each of these topics in this video, but just know that this remains consistent from prior years. The Praxis Core Math exam gives you 90 minutes to complete 56 questions, so time management is critical. To maximize your score, you'll need a solid approach to pacing and prioritization. And here's how to do that. Stick to about one and a half minutes per question on average. You can use this as a general guide to keep you moving steadily throughout the exam. And if you find an easier question, you can complete it quickly and bank a little extra time for the more challenging questions. And if you're stuck on a question, don't dwell on it. You can mark it for review, skip it, and move on to the next question. This ensures that you're answering as many questions as possible within the time limit. In terms of the questions themselves, you can expect most questions to be standard multiple choice questions. And these questions will ask you to solve a problem or evaluate a teaching approach and then provide four or five answer choices where only one is correct. This means you don't always have to know exactly how to solve the problem, but instead to be able to use the available answers to narrow down by limiting yourself to the offered options and removing the obviously wrong answers. There may be a few questions, however, that follow a more unique format. And these questions include multi-select questions where there may be more than one correct answer. These are signaled with select all that apply. These are a bit trickier and you'll need to identify all correct answers to get points for the problem. There will also be a few numeric entry questions where you will not be given any answer choices, but instead you'll be asked to solve a problem on your own and to type in the answer. Another strategy tip here is to read every question carefully, especially with multi-select questions, to ensure that you don't miss the question format that you're dealing with and that you're able to answer them correctly. Now, let's talk scoring. The Praxis Core Math exam is scored on a scale of 100 to 200, and the passing score is generally a 150. However, every state has its own score requirements, so always check your state's guidelines on praxis.ets.org. I've linked to the specific page down in the description below. The ETS keeps their scoring logic confidential, even from us. However, a good rule of thumb is to take your state's passing score, subtract it by 100, and then treat the resulting number as a percentage. 
That means if your pass and score requirement is 150, you can roughly assume that you need to get at least 50% of the questions correct in order to pass. And that brings me to my next strategy tip. There's no penalty for the wrong answers on the Praxis exam and answering every question gives you the best chances of improving your score. Watch the timer and answer as many questions as possible to maximize your score, even if it means guessing on hard questions when time is running out. Make sure to use general test taking strategies like crossing out clearly wrong answers and using hints from the question and answer choices. Also, don't forget to explore the other videos on this channel for detailed tips and step-by-step -step guides on tackling the different question types. Okay, back to the Praxis Core Math exam. You're never allowed to bring in your own calculator to a Praxis exam. However, ETS provides an on-screen calculator for some of their exams. And the good news is, the Praxis Core Math is one of those exams. You'll have an on-screen four-function calculator that you have access to throughout the entirety of the exam. This calculator can handle the basic arithmetic, but it doesn't include advanced functions. My next strategy tip relates to this. Practice using the updated calculator before the test day. There's a free tutorial version on the ETS website so that you can get familiar with it and not fumble with the tool during the exam. I've provided a direct link down in the description. Here's a few more calculator specific tips. First, use the memory function to save results on multi-step calculations. Next, Avoid rounding intermediate calculations until the final step to ensure the accuracy of your final answer. And finally, since it's a simple calculator, try to only use it for quick calculations and don't rely too much on it. I recommend trying to do the mental math first and then using the calculator to double check your answer. Another common question that I get for this test is around formulas. The Praxis Core Math exam does provide you with the basic notation and formula sheets that you may reference during the exam. However, I always encourage test takers not to depend on this sheet. It may not be inclusive of every formula that you need, and you don't want your first experience of using a specific formula to be on the test day itself. I'm going to show some common formulas on the screen that you should make sure that you are comfortable with. You can feel free to pause and jot them down, and please take the time to practice solving the problems with these formulas so that you're confident with using them on test day. Now, I have some really important information on scrap paper. This is an important resource on test day and can help you work through problems and keep your calculations straight, but you'll need to follow ETS's rules. If you're taking a test in person at a test and center, make sure to request scrap paper from your proctor and don't attempt to bring in your own. You'll also need to return the scrap paper to the proctor at the end of the test. If the proctor sees you taking your own paper out of your pocket or doesn't think that you've returned all of the scrap paper at the end, you may get accused of cheating and your score will be invalidated. If you're taking the test at home on your own computer, you can't take notes on regular paper and you'll be asked to erase all notes in view of the proctor at the end of the test. To take notes at home, ETS recommends that you use a small dry erase board with a marker. You won't be allowed to start the test if you try to use a regular sheet of paper. All right, now let's dive in a little deeper into the contents that you'll see on test day. The Praxis Core Math exam is divided into three main categories, each with roughly the same number of questions with the same scoring weight. The first section is number and quantity. You can think of it as the fundamentals of math. This tests your understanding of things like integers, fractions, decimals, percentages, ratios, and proportions. You'll need to know how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide, plus apply these operations to sample word problems and classroom teaching examples. 
you should also expect to be asked to convert between fractions, decimals, and percentages, and to solve word problems involving unit rates and proportional relationships. Also, sure to brush up on number properties, things like even versus odd, prime versus composited numbers, factors, multiples, and divisibility rules. If you have questions here, make sure to check out our practice problems videos specifically on the number and quantity section. The second section is data interpretation and representation, statistics, and probability. This part is all about reading and analyzing different sets of data, including different ways of visualizing data, such as charts, tables, and graphs. You'll calculate mean, median, mode, range, and you'll work with concepts like central tendencies versus spread in data sets. You'll also be asked to identify positive and negative relationships between data sets, as well as to use the results of random sampling of data to make inferences about the characteristics of a larger population. One call out here is that you should understand the difference between correlation versus causation, or when two things are actually impacting each other versus it being just a coincidence. Finally, you should expect to solve simple probability problems, such as the likelihood of rolling a specific number on a dice or the likelihood of drawing a specific suit from a deck of cards. If you have questions here, make sure to check out our practice problem videos specifically on data, statistics, and probability. The final category is algebra and geometry. And here, you'll work with algebraic expressions, equations, and patterns. Make sure you're familiar with properties like distributive, associative, and commutative, and practice solving for unknowns in variable equations. Word problems are a focus, so being able to translate real-world situations into equations is one of the keys. On the geometry side, you'll tackle shapes, angles, congruence, similarity, and formulas for perimeter, area, and volume, plus the Pythagorean theorem. Recognizing geometric relationships will help you solve applied problems. Check out our Praxis Core Math playlist for videos that walk through authentic practice problems and provide step-by-step -step solutions and testing strategies for all of these topics. All right. I know that this is a lot, but stick with me just a little longer. Let's talk about preparing for the Praxis Core Math exam. It's going to require a targeted approach, which brings me to my final strategy tip. Take a full-length practice test earlier in your prep. This identifies your strengths and pinpoints the areas that you need to work on. You can think of it as a roadmap for focused studying. Here's a bonus tip. If a full-length test feels too daunting, consider checking out study.com's diagnostics quizzes. Study.com has customized quizzes for each Praxis test code to analyze your performance and create a personalized study plan. This helps you focus your efforts where they'll have the biggest impact. Finally, Regardless of how or where you're practicing, try to practice like it's the real test. Stick to your time limits and limit yourself to the resources that you'll have available to you on test day. And remember, preparation isn't just about learning the content. It's also about mastering test-taking strategies and building the confidence to succeed on test day. And that's it. Your ultimate guide to conquering the Praxis 5733 Core Academic Skills for Educators Mathematics Exam. For more detailed practice, strategies, and walkthroughs, check out our Praxis Math Playlist here on YouTube, and then make your way over to study.com and check out one of our Praxis test prep courses. Our users boast a 92% pass rate, and our courses include full-length exams, hundreds of practice questions and additional video lessons specifically tailored to the latest test updates. With our resources, you'll know exactly what to expect on test day.
Thanks for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel for more updates on Praxis exams and leave your questions and success stories down in the comments below. Remember, we're rooting for you every step of the way. You've got this.